Hi, I'm Clyde Lewis. This is Ground Zero Behind the Scenes. Today we are going to be looking back at a show that we did with Rex Diablo's church, formerly of the Church of Satan. He is with us and uh, we did a show about the esoteric, I guess the esoteric uh, meaning of what happened at the Large Hadron Collider, the CERN Large Hadron Collider, where they found the God particle. Many times I've discussed with Rex the possibility that what's happening here is some sort of a ritualized type of uh, magic opening of a portal. I know that sounds weird and remarkable, but a lot of people have been saying that there are stargates around the world that are anchored all over the planet. They have just found vortexes now, or vortices that are connected to the sun, and all kinds of other craziness that we're just hearing that somehow gets below the reporting on the mainstream news and gets exploited on science rags and other places, but hardly talked about in the mainstream. So what Rex is talking about on our program is the idea that this is something far deeper than just finding the particle or the holy grail, the atom that they're looking for, the God particle. So. Give a listen to what he has to say, and uh, you can determine for yourself if this is all something that is ritualized and strange going on at CERN right there in Geneva. And so we welcome to Ground Zero, Diablos Rex. There you are. Hey, Clyde. How are you? <laughs> Good. Good to have you here. Uh, and in fact, everybody out there is uh, excited to hear that you're here, and um, I'm glad you made it. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. So let's talk a bit about what's going on in the world. I mean, you've been around. You've been all over the world. So, I mean, you just were. You just got back from Chile. Mm -hmm. Beautiful country. You've been uh, busy there, and you've been uh, going everywhere, and you've been talking with people. And uh, and the reason why I'm bringing you on is primarily because you and I have always had discussions about what's really going on out there in this magic and this new magic that they're doing, these particle physics and the quantum leaps and all these things. It's just part of magic. I mean, quantum science is... Another way of talking about magic. What are we seeing in the world right now, and what is it that we need to be aware of that's so dark and sinister? Uh, <clears throat> well, science has always been considered magic. Um, as long as the popular conception of that science was something that they didn't understand. And anytime somebody begins to talk about uh, physics, especially quantum physics, and it seems really mysterious, and you've got these strange machines doing this and doing that, and and uh, you know, s uh, smashing particles, or uh, and they're measuring the particular uh, impact of these type of, of collisions. The, the average individual has absolutely no idea what it is that they're actually doing there, and that, like optics, um, during the uh, 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 post dark ages you know these types of things were highly suspect as being the tools of the devil well they really are but not really in the way in which people think they are aspects of our higher intelligence of our independence of our of our need and our desire to go at beyond the physical world to become gods ourselves some people have a problem with that because it's sacrilegious. One of the things that I think is a theme that's running through everyone right now, it's, it's going everywhere, is this whole idea of Prometheus, the Promethean theme. There's a movie out about Prometheus yeah. talking about the gods, the elder gods, and, and their purpose. Stole the fire from the gods. Stole the fire from the gods. And how the gods are, you know, it, it's just this underlying theme that somewhere out there we have found out that God or the gods, or the engineers, or whatever they are, perhaps even occult engineers or causal engineers such as yourself, were out there planning this creation, and somewhere something went wrong, and now they're plotting the destruction of this creation, not only the idea of a theoretical god doing so, but the leaders that exist among us themselves wanting to call the planet for sustainability. Well, there's a, there's a major fear of the so-called overwrite of consensus reality on the planet, meaning that things have become so decadent and so decayed and so politically inviable that the only way to really deal with this is to wipe it clean and start over. If you check the uh, the book of, of uh, you check the Bible, you know you already have stories about that. Man had become uh, loose in morals and in activity, and his mind had not become right. So the gods decided, well, we got to do something to get rid of him. So we'll flood the earth and we'll destroy everything. We'll start over again. 
Um, I don't think this is anything new. I mean, apocalyptic theology is something that runs through the the essence of mankind. And right now we are being able to see how that might very well become a reality again because we are on the threshold of of secrets about our invasion of reality. Science's invasion of reality, which is so great that we have the secrets of the gods in a way that... that it's greater than at any other time in history. There hasn't been anybody involved in science who didn't first think about it as a conception for future. When you begin to think about future, you have to be in the position of God. You have to think about the long-term implications of what might happen as a result of that creation. Mm. Even if it's just subjective or subconscious. For anybody to say that uh, no, they don't think about anything like that at all. It's just the most grotesque naivete you can possibly imagine. Well, the, the Higgs boson does not create mass. What happens is that it gives uh, or creates conditions for mass to actually happen with uh, any type of physical particle. Right. Uh, so it's not a generator of, of mass. It actually creates a wave that attaches itself to other aspects other particles and then from that mass is derived um so is this some sort of a uh, i mean i always got the feeling that this is some sort of a, a holy grail for quantum physicists it's something that it's more spiritual than it is scientific in a sense because are they really trying to harness the power of god well, is the, that what this is about the deeper you get into reality the closer to um i mean the, the smallest subatomic particles that you get you begin to realize that then they still behave according to things that are somewhat predictable, but then it gets to a point in which you can't actually um, ascertain or even hypothetically um, quantify or use um, theory to see what's actually happening. So you ha- kind of have to like look at uh, um, uh, elements of, of, of possibility. Well, during uh, the break, you were so, explaining that where we stand... Well, yeah, I was talking about uh, our relationship um, with respect to both the largest uh, objects in space and the smallest uh, quantum uh, elements. And if you were to look at the largest objects that we can that we can perceive in space, like uh, super galaxies, um, and then you go down to the the smallest elements, the string theory elements. Um, um, Subatomic particles, quarks, antiquarks, um, string theory, anti-quark, anti-string theory. It's like you get down to the smallest elements. And personally, I believe that that never really stops because even the Mandelbrot set says that uh, things both uh, go f- outward as well as inward exponentially forever. Mm-hmm. They don't stop. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we do know, at least at this point in, in that series of measurements, is that humanity is exactly in between the largest objects that we know about in space and the smallest objects we know about in super inner space. Which is really kind of interesting because that places us in the position of Abraxas, which is the god that uh, measures uh, as above and so below. It uh, operates in the same um, spiritual concept as the Baphomet, um, Salve coagula, which is as above, so below. But it's also as in the outer, so as in the inner. So are you saying that we are the ones that control it all and that we're the ones that have that control instead of externalizing our control elsewhere? What I'm saying is that life is what determines those things. And we that's the only thing we can measure that against right now is our own lives, our lives, the lives of everything else on this planet. We've been trying to, like, find something to... Uh, collate that to exteriorly, you know, foreign life. But so far, everything that we know about foreign life from space, whether it's conjectural or hypothetical or uh, conspiratorial, has been lives that are not all that different than ours. Mm -hmm. We are the gods of this planet. And therefore, nothing should be denied us. We should be able to experiment create and destroy with impunity because we recognize that this is our legacy if we're gods if we are gods then why is it that it seems that throughout history mankind has tried to open the doorway to speak with god or at least 
be with God. And what I'm getting at is you take, go all the way back to the Old Testament. You know, we have the story of Nimrod, right? Now, what was Nimrod's purpose? What no, was he? He, was, he, was, he was the initiator of the Tower of Babel. And he wanted to commune with God. I mean, nothing could be more beautiful than wanting to be able to re-commune, reconnect with your creator. And, and, and in so doing, if you look at this from a Buddhist perspective, you recognize that you, what you are doing is communing with the innermost self. It's not just something opposite, something outside. So the Tower of something Nimrod is a representation is of him. Of, well, of us, of what we, our potentiality, what we would become. And, but there's a great deal of fear around that because you know, there's just a lot of un- misunderstanding about exactly how that is to be perceived. And there's no way that you can elevate the self, transcend beyond that without some sacrifices being made. And some of those sacrifices are the attitudes, perceptions, and ideologies of those who think that it's not us, it's something outside of that. This is the running meme right now. I mean, in Pro- you bring up Prometheus. The running meme has always been, we need to seek out where God is, where God dwells, and find out why God doesn't talk to us anymore. You know why? Find out why God wanted to kill us. Find out why God, what? That's because the essence of God is in the one place no one looks, and that is inside the self. I find it interesting. I, I even created my own name, which is Cernabog, yeah, which is yeah. based on Chernabog. Chernabog, the, uh, the dark lord, the, the black god, yeah, the, which, interestingly <clears throat> enough, was also a god of the dead, and given the fact that uh, um, uh, the um, nuclear facility uh, in Russia mm-hmm. had the same name. Chernabog uh, or Cernabog? Chernabog, right? Chern. Oh, and, oh. and it was. Oh, yeah. And even Chernobyl. The, Chernobyl. Chernobyl. And, and even like to CERN. this day, you cannot go there I never without thought being of that. involved or not be exposed to high levels of radioactivity. So Chernobyl is a form of Cernanos, a form of Well, he's a form Chernobog. of the black guy. He's the lord of the underworld, yes. Why? Why do they do this? No, I just, I don't believe that any of this stuff is uh, it's relativistically... Not like um, fantastical, I think that's just germane to our nature as human, oh, you know, entities. You, I mean, oh my God, that just like, that's just me. that's just within us. So, so. Chernobyl, 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 CERN, right, right, Kernu, yeah. there you go, Cernanos, Same all being. tied to Satan, to the Lord of the Underworld, the right. Dark Lord yes. of the Underworld, whether the he, Horned whether, One, whether Baphomet. he's in his guise as the Destroyer or a Creator, and he's both. I'm, I'm floored. I didn't even think of Chernobyl being. I mean, because I call I call the article that I wrote uh, Cernabog, a play on words. Because Chernabog always frightened me when I was a kid when I watched Fantasia. For those of you that don't know who Chernabog is, the last scene in Fantasia, uh, Chernabog is the demon on Bald Mountain. Russians this even huge, to this day are very um, Russian nervous demon. about uh, the use of uh, the name of Chernabog. So they called Chernobyl. Uh, and so, Chernobog, of course, Cern- during that during the period of time in which this happened, you had the uh, Russian dictator with the uh, uh, the mark uh, on his head. Um, oh, yeah, I know you're talking about. I know you're talking about um, <laughs> who Gorbachev. Gorbachev, yeah. who did not in any way ally the fears of Russian Christians because they had often seen his red port wine birthmark is the mark of the beast and there you have it that's rex church of course he has uh, been with ground zero for a while being a consultant from the occult now he is with the chaos imperium formerly of the church of satan and is now speaking on behalf of the chaos imperium as a group of people who study the occult reveal what the occult has to say and how it all comes together for our futures there is an occult history and this is something that i think a lot of people are interested in hearing about i'm clyde lewis and this has been ground zero behind the scenes